friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Carrie with Photograph the Magic, and welcome to part two of my Memory Maker and Disney Photo Pass service video. In part one, I shared all about what Photo Pass and Memory Maker are, so if you're not sure exactly what they are, head back and watch part one of this series. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing my thoughts on if Photo Pass and Memory Maker are worth it to purchase for your next Disney vacation. I'm a family and birth photographer, and I traveled to Disney World often. I'm using my experience as a photographer and as a Disney vacationer to let you know the top things you should consider before purchasing Memory Maker. If you consider this list I'm about to share with you, you'll be able to decide at the end of the video if purchasing Memory Maker for your next Disney vacation is worth it for you and the people you're traveling with. Okay, I have six things for you to consider and a couple extra bonus tips at the end, so you'll want to hang out till the end to hear those. The first thing to consider before you purchase Memory Maker. I feel that purchasing Memory Maker is worth it if you want and appreciate photos where your whole travel party can be in the photo. If you're the primary photographer in your house or of your travel party, you kind of already get the idea that you might not be in every single picture. For my family, that's me. There's a lot of pictures that I'm not in. So having the opportunity to have a professional photographer, Disney's PhotoPass photographers, sure take pictures of my entire family and know that I'm going to be in the picture makes it totally worth it for us. Photos are extremely important to me. My mom passed away when I was 13 and the photos that we have as a family, the photos I have of her are some of my most prized possessions. Our last family trip we went on before she passed away was to Walt Disney World. I was in seventh grade and I will never forget that trip. However, they did not have Disney Photo Pass photographers then, so all the pictures we have are either of us kids and my dad, or us kids and my mom, or my mom and dad together. So even those photos bring back such good memories and they're so important to me. But if we just had one picture of our entire family in front of Cinderella Castle, it probably would be my top prized possession. Sadly, I don't have one of those. So having the opportunity to have PhotoPass photographers take pictures of your entire family together, I think is really, really special. So if having your whole group together in a photo is really important to you, Memory Maker might really be worth it. However, on the flip side, if you're not shy to ask strangers to help take photos of you and the people you're traveling with, that's another really easy way for everyone to get in the photo. But in order to do that, you actually have to approach someone and ask them and feel comfortable with them holding your camera or your phone to take your picture. They're also not professional photographers like the PhotoPass photographer. I mean, unless you get lucky and find that one random stranger that is. But generally, it's gonna be another vacationer who's gonna quickly stop and snap your photo. But again, if you're too shy to ask or feel like you don't wanna bother another family by asking them to take your photo, Disney PhotoPass is an awesome option. Okay, the second thing to consider when you're wondering if you should purchase PhotoPass Pass. If you are okay with less than perfect photos, PhotoPass might be worth it for you. PhotoPass is not a super high quality, high end portrait studio photo session. This is Disney's way of getting a high volume of people through the parks and getting a great photo. But again, it's not a high quality edited photo. It's like a fast, here you go, stand in line, we're gonna take your photo and on you go sort of situation. The photographer doesn't have time to wait for the kids to stop crying. The photo Pass photographer isn't going to pose you exactly like a lifestyle family photographer would or a portrait photographer. Their goal is again just to get a large volume of people through their line to get photos in front of the castle and however you're standing is kind of how you're standing. They're going to pose you but it's not going to be the same type of experience you may have had with like a wedding photographer or if you've had maternity photos done. Things like that. Also the photos come straight out of camera meaning the photographers are not editing the photos. They're not changing the lighting or the colors. They're not editing people out of the background that are doing what people in the background do in photos. So you're just gonna get these photos straight from the photographer's camera. That might mean people in your party are blinking or not looking at the camera. So if you're okay with photos that are not completely perfect, or if you feel comfortable editing photos on your own, maybe adding presets, or if you know how to edit people out of the background of your photos, PhotoPass might be a really good option for you. I think it's super important to share my experience so that you can have a really clear expectation of what it's like to get your PhotoPass photos. 
photos back. And as a photographer, are the photos captured exactly the same way I would? Definitely not. But they totally meet the purpose. The PhotoPass photographers don't have the same style of photography that I do, but to me, the photos are still worth it because I know that I can change the photo on the back end, I can edit it or add a preset or crop it or do whatever I need to do to kind of get it up to my standard. So if you are a professional photographer or if you want Instagram perfect photos, they might not get the exact same photo you're looking for. In my last video, I shared that the PhotoPass photographers aren't really able to leave their spot. They're stationed just where they're stationed, so they're not gonna be moving around to different locations. So again, that's something to consider when purchasing Memory Maker. A third thing to consider when purchasing Memory Maker. Do you ride attractions and do you like the photos that you get from the attractions? I personally think they're hilarious <laughs> and some of my favorite photos I've ever gotten are on some of the rides at Disney World. But if you're someone that gets motion sick or if you know you're not riding any attractions at all, it just might lessen the value of it. If you love attractions and know you're gonna have all of those attraction photos, I guess it just gives you a little more bang for your buck as they say. All right, moving along. The fourth thing to consider when purchasing Memory Maker is if you're someone who enjoys photos, you like to look at them, maybe you make photo books or hang them on your wall. If you enjoy your photos after your vacations, then Memory Maker or PhotoPass might really be worth it for you. But if you go on vacation, take some photos and just sort of leave them on your phone, you don't really ever look at them again, you don't really send them to anyone or use them for anything, then it might not be totally worth it for you. Okay, a fifth Thing to consider before purchasing Memory Maker. If you're looking for a little extra magic on your vacation, the magic shots that you can get with Memory Maker is so fun. I shared this in my last video, but my kids still talk about the magic shots we got on our vacation a year and a half ago. They loved coming back to the resort every night and checking at my phone, looking at all the different shots that we got through the day. In some of the photos, they added a rainbow and different characters, and they just thought it was so fun. It's like a little extra piece of magic that you have on your vacation to share with your family. Like one little extra surprise in the evening and it's just really fun to do. So since my kids love it so much, it just makes it really fun for the whole family to open up the phone together. We would sit on the couch and then check out the photos that were downloaded. And it just, again, it made it really, really fun. All right, so far I've shared five things that would make Memory Maker worth it or not, depending on your situation. I have one more thing to share and I have two bonus tips after this. So the last and the most important thing to consider before you purchase Memory Maker, will you use it? Will you and your travel party, your family, your kids, whoever you're with, will you actually stop and get in line with those PhotoPass photographers to get your photo taken? There are so many times that even when I travel, I'm just going to the next attraction and the next attraction, actually probably more like the next snack and the next snack and the next snack, that it makes it hard to stop sometimes. I've seen the photo, the, I, <laughs> I've seen the PhotoPass lines be 20 families deep and I've seen them with nobody in it. So so if you know that you want to make use of Memory Maker, you have to stop for the photos. So consider what type of Disney family you are. Do you have really little kids that are gonna have a hard time waiting in another line during the day? Do you have teenagers that are truly gonna be racing and racing and racing to the next thing and get annoyed if they have to stop? Do you have people in your party who hate taking pictures, like my husband, that are gonna have a hard time waiting in these lines? Thinking through the people that you're traveling with and considering how hard or how easy it's to stop and wait in another line is something to consider. So if you don't stop and wait in line for those photos, you won't have any photos, which will make memory maker totally not worth it for you. All right, here are my last two bonus tips to decide if purchasing Memory Maker will be worth it for you. The number one thing I recommend to my friends and family and people online who come to me for photography advice at Disney is to schedule time for photos in your Disney day. So many Disney vacationers are planning time for attractions, for snacks, for sit down meals, for nighttime shows, for meeting characters, but scheduling time for photos is not something that people are normally doing. And it can take a little bit of time. It is the worst, the worst, the worst thing to leave Magic Kingdom after a full day. It's if it's your only day at Magic Kingdom to leave the park and realize on your way home that you never stopped for a single photo in front of the castle. And as you're planning your Disney trip, you're probably thinking that would never happen, but it's so easy to do during the day as you're running to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So actually scheduling time during your day, during your vacation to take photos can help tremendously. And then not only scheduling it, but telling 
everyone you're traveling with so they can have the same expectations you do about your day. If they are not expecting to take pictures during the day and you spring it on them at that moment, they might not love that so much. So just being sure to share with everyone you're going with that you have an expectation or a desire to stop and take, you know, however many photos during the day, or you at least want two different castle photos or whatever it is that you're looking for. That way you can all be on the same page. You can make sure that you have time to do everything you want and get those really, really awesome Disney vacation photos that you deserve. All right, my last piece of advice to determine if Memory Maker is worth it for your family to purchase is to actually sit and calculate it. I did this before our Disney trip of January of last year. I sat and I took the price we purchased in advance. So we um, were using the $169 to calculate. I thought to myself, how many different photos would it be worth it for me to have this? You could either calculate by number of photos or how many times you want to stop, like how many different locations would it be to be worth it to pay that price. And I thought, you know what, I would love to have 20 photos. If I could have 20 photos in a perfect world, 20 different locations, which seems like a lot. But if you calculate that 20 divided by $169, it's over $8 a photo or a location. So for me to purchase it, I really wanted to get use out of it. So then I thought, how many park days do we have? We had four park days. And then how many times would we have to stop for a photo each day for us to get that 20 photos or 20 locations? And we would have to stop five times each day to get our 20 photos. And I really thought hard about it. I wasn't really sure if it was gonna work. So I really had to consider if that was worth it for us. Do I really wanna stop and stand in five different lines every day for pictures? I didn't know how hard that was gonna be before we went on the trip. You know, each trip you just don't know how busy the crowds are gonna be. So I didn't know how long we'd be waiting in each line but that was sort of my goal I thought if I could get 20 different locations or 20 different pictures then I would feel like it was worth it and just having that number in my head or that thought it really helped a lot because we were able to stop as many times as I wanted so we got more than that so having that number in my head as I was planning really helped I was able to share that with my husband and my kids so they all knew the expectation of stopping for photos on our trip I didn't want to pay that $169 and not use it at all or have them say they were too tired or didn't want to take a picture, which happened anyway. <laughs> but at least my husband and I got to be in some photos because we knew how many times we were gonna stop for photo pass photos every day, or at least what my goal was. Because everyone in my family knew what the goal was, we were able to accomplish it. And then there was like a little less complaining than I think there would have been if I would have surprised them every time. But it was awesome because each time we saw a photo pass photographer, if they had a very small or no line at all, we got to run right up to them and take our pictures. And it worked out really well. So calculating how many photos you want for your trip, if you purchase Memory Maker and then calculate it per picture, is it worth it? What if you purchase it for $169 and you only take two photos, is that worth it? So really strongly consider the price and your situation and your travel plans before purchasing. All right, so to sum it up, is Memory Maker worth it? The answer is only you can know for your family. For me, I can say it is 100% worth it. I've purchased it on my family vacations and when I travel solo and I have loved it. On my solo trips, I have actually purchased just the one day memory maker and that has been awesome because on that one day then I know I make it a priority to get to every photo pass photographer that I can. I've used it at Animal Kingdom. I just love it there so much and it really worked out well to know that that was my one day to like hit every photo pass photographer that I could to get my money's worth. And when I go with my family, it's really worth it because I want to be in the photos with my kids. My kids love the magic shots. We enjoy our photos afterwards. And so for us, it really does feel worth it. But again, only you know your family dynamics, the people you're traveling with, if you're gonna have enough patience to wait in line for the photos, and if you're gonna schedule that time to take the photos. So please tell me, do you think Memory Maker is worth it for you and your family? Please comment below and let me know. Also, what other things would you suggest people consider before purchasing Memory Maker? Please share that, I would love to hear. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye friends.